What's up enthusiasts, today we're taking a look at the Select Fire Strife Kit from Lytake. This is something Lytake sent me for review that initially I was excited but a little skeptical about in terms of performance. This is the version 3.8 that I currently have, which is important as there are multiple different versions. Um, this one offers a decent amount of options, including the ability to change your fire rate, uh, the three different firing modes from full auto to burst to single, which is really cool that you have that functionality really quick and easy right by your thumb if you're right-handed. Um, you can also set voltage alarms and things like that, which is definitely nice. You can change options with these three buttons over here. I won't get too far into the details of that aspect as there are guides online on how to do that, which I will link to down below if you have this and want to take a look into that. Uh, I wanted to really focus on the functionality in use and in practice, uh, along with the installation, which uh, was interesting. But overall, before we get into the details, I want to say that I like this kit for the most part. Um, it comes in at $50 right now. Uh, that can change as light take. Uh, most of you know the changes or the prices can fluctuate here and there. There can be sales fairly often, but listed right now as of the filming of this review at $50, uh, which is a significant price and something you want reliability and good performance if you are dropping that money down on something. So uh, we'll find out as we go if that is worth it for this Strife kit. But overall, I like it's fun to have. It's fun to have that flexibility to just, just easily swap uh, with your thumb just so quick and so so simple. Uh, that, that novelty is fun um, and it's something I very much enjoy. Uh, I don't know that I would use this in a competitive setting, which is kind of what I'm all about, or even in an HVZ setting. Um, and we'll get into that actually during the installation, the reason why I won't do that. But uh, overall, if you, if you want a TLDR, I don't think this is for everyone. I think this is a really fun and interesting product, but I don't think it's for everyone. So that said, let's talk about the installation. What I can say right off the bat is that they do provide instructions that are for the most part good. Uh, there was one little part where I didn't have a direct image or guide or wording on what to do and that was when I was splicing the wires into the loom itself. Now uh, the assumption was positive, positive, negative, negative, which was the case, but it would be nice to have an extra panel or page for those that may not have ever worked with wiring to understand. Um, now it does say if you want to put this on the terminals, use like the AA cell batteries, which is one thing, but I think a lot of people with this kit are doing complete rewires and it doesn't go into that side of things, which is important to note. Um, on top of that, I made some personal errors when installing this. Uh, such as wires touching where I had to try and splice things in that caused issues that Walcom and I had a good laugh about when I was talking with them about it. Um, but there are a couple things that I 
I'm not the biggest fan of in terms of uh, the way they perform after installation. And those are the parts, namely, that go on the main trigger here. Uh, there is a switch, a really, really small switch somewhere around this area uh, that your trigger hits to activate that cycle. Now, the trigger itself doesn't normally hit it because it's on a plate that's elevated, so you have to put a little nub on top of your trigger, and mine, while it hits, and you can hear it, if I do a complete trigger pull, it actually slides off of that, which means if I switch to full auto and pull the trigger down all the way, it will stop cycling. Uh, I'm gonna explain this whole thing before I show you because this may be loud enough to uh, cover up my speaking. But unfortunately, since it slides off, I have to hold it at not a complete trigger pull if I want to do full auto, which is definitely something you can run into issues with in the heat of the moment. Say, HVZ, you're running along and you're trying to spray down a horde of zombies that catches you by surprise and you accidentally Pull the trigger down all the way. Now, this is something you can you can mitigate, you can solve that issue, but I would have liked it if the design was clean enough that the printed part went on in such a way that you don't need to worry about that issue. That issue. You don't have to finagle things to make them work. Um, so let's just give you a demonstration. That's on full auto. So if I hold it down partway, just enough to hit that switch, it goes fine. If I pull down all the way, it doesn't continue cycling, which is an issue. Again, this is something I can fix, and I'm going to fix the next time I pop this open, but it's still something that warranted mentioning that these parts may not fit perfectly, and you may need to adjust or modify the parts that are sent with the kit that you would assume is a drop-in kit. It's not a deal-breaker for me, but it is something to consider. <laughs> topic of how this actually performs functionally um for the most part i i really enjoy it um i i just love the idea i love having a select fire set up in something this compact and nice my main little issue is that as someone that's all about competitive play and stuff like that i want something that's the most responsive and while this sounds responsive and for the most part it is there is a slight difference between a standard strife trigger pull and this trigger pull, which feels like it has a mild amount of delay. I mean, we're talking very minimal, but to me, it's just enough to feel a little bit maybe uh, sluggish. Not, not, not oppressively so, but enough for me to notice. And I think the reasoning is I have to go all the way back for my trigger pull, and then once I hit that edge, that flips the switch, then the uh, the pusher starts its cycle. Unlike where if you are working a regular strife trigger pull, where your trigger pull as you are pulling down is gradually pushing that pusher uh, that's hitting the dart and pushing in the flywheels, that feels more tactily responsive. Uh, tactily, tactily, I, it feels more responsive, it feels uh, better in hand, I suppose you could say. And that's that's one of my personal opinions. It's not like a... That's not a number that I can provide that that's like an FPS claim or a rev time claim. It's more of a feel type thing. And it may not be as big of an issue to you, but it is to me. So this is probably going to be relegated to a uh, fun game, casual game, regular type events type of blaster where I'll have a ton of fun using it. The other thing I want to talk about is reliability. 
uh, there have been quite a few posts about uh, this kit not performing, uh, whether it's a MOSFET burning out or one of the boards having issues. That's something that seems to be a potential downside for this kit is that if you push it too hard, that MOSFET inside may have an issue. I believe it's a MOSFET that's the issue, but um, actually, as I was getting ready to film this review, I noticed that they actually had announced or teased images for a V6 version of this Strife Select Fire kit. Why they jumped from 3.8 to 6, I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But based on the images that they have provided, it looks to be a beefier, more robust kit that may potentially uh, be more reliable and long lasting under high loads. Now, I can't tell you exactly at what point things may burn out or you may have issues with this kit. It seems to vary from person to person. Uh, it may be more likely if you are trying to heavily, heavily uh, push the blaster to stall at long periods of time. That may be an issue. Uh, I, I don't know the exact details of what's causing it, but it is something that people are running into issues. So it's worth mentioning. Now, uh, I think that the fact that they have another kit coming out that may address some of the issues with this kit and also provides um, a LED screen right here that I think has an integrated ammo counter, if I recall correctly, and a volt or a voltmeter, one of the two. But it's definitely cool they're continuing to try and improve the design because it's a cool thing. It, I, I dig this. Overall, I like this. My final thoughts on this are that it's fun. It's absolutely fun. And the installation, as someone that is still a considerably new modder in the grand scheme of things, wasn't that bad. Uh, I actually learned a decent amount installing that, which is another way you could look at it, is it's a way to teach yourself a little bit more of the way things work inside of a blaster in a little bit uh, more of a compact space beyond just the simple strife circuit. Um, I don't know that I pay $50 just for that itself, but it's a nice little addition you can look at. I think this is great for the just casual fun events where you don't need to worry about a blaster burning out potentially or uh, the trigger little catch sliding off of the switch if you didn't install it just right. Um, I, it's just those little things that really keep me from saying it's a must buy and I hope that with the V6, they really hammer that down and fix all the little things that people have had issues with and really nail it and knock it out of the park. Because, uh, like I said, this is just fun. It's just a fun kit, and I'm really enjoying just messing around with it and having fun uh, practicing things. So I'm looking forward to getting this out to an actual game, and you'll probably see some footage of that when I do, because I'll be having fun switching between firing modes and just just generally nerding out with this and having a good time, which is, I think, the point and the fun of this kit. So my, my general thoughts on this is it's fun. I think if you have the money to spare, it's a, it's a worthwhile purchase if you are not needing it to be 100% reliable and you are okay with that. Um, but I cannot recommend it to people that, that want to use this for HVZ, want to use it for a competitive team setting, want to um, really push their blaster to be the most reliable high-end peak performance machine it can be, but it's fun. And that's why I, I, I'm so on the fence on it that it's, I, can, I can say it's a product I like, but it's not one I can universally recommend. We'll put it that way. I think that's a decent way to go about it. Uh, 50 bucks, if it was 10 bucks cheaper, I think that would be a decent place for it. But again, there's a decent amount of components that go into this, so you gotta take that into consideration. Uh, with that said, have you ordered one of these kits? Have you used any of the versions? Are you looking forward to the version 6 of this kit that will hopefully address some of the issues? Let me know down in the comments uh, your thoughts on Select Fire kits in general. I love hearing from all of you. 
And if you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more in the future. I'll go ahead and put that right over here as well. And we'll put a video right over here, maybe some gameplay footage or something fun. Uh, if you're if you're new to the channel as well and you like reviews, you like Nerf news, we do that every single Saturday morning. So go ahead. Check us out for more in the future if you want to get your Nerf news here, along with some gameplay and mods as well. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.